If you're looking for the best wiring possible, you're gonna have to crimp. Today, we look at the most relevant connectors for a 3D printer and how to crimp them to perfection. I recently had a video from a viewer named Jason wanting to know about the various connectors used in 3D printers and similar machines with questions about pitch, types, tools, etc. I had just added to my crimping tool collection and I'm part way through wiring up the RatRig VCore 3, so I guess this video was just meant to be. I'm pretty sure we can cover everything from the request and we're gonna start with what exactly crimping is. I think most people would be familiar with the process of soldering, where we use a soldering iron to heat up two components and then introduce solder, which melts evenly between them, creating an electrical junction. Soldering can be used on these machines, but what we're concerning ourselves with today is the process of crimping, where we strip back the ends of the wires, then we typically have a connector that goes into a crimping tool and then is crushed down to mechanically grip the wire. Once the crimp is successful, the metal terminal then goes inside a plastic connector housing and the junction is complete. Let's have a closer look at what's typically happening when we crimp a connector. We have stranded wire with the end of the insulation stripped off and we rest this inside the metal terminal. The process of crimping alters that metal terminal with one part gripping hard on the insulation without damaging it and the section over the exposed wire curling down and gripping it tightly. And the combination of these two is typically quite secure. If we hide the connector and look at just what's happening to the wire, we can see that the crimping makes narrow sections that act like a bottleneck. If you think about it, this is kind of like handcuffs, where we secure a narrow section and then the thicker section adjacent can't pull back through without something breaking. There are variations depending on which connector you're using, but typically it works out the same. A strong mechanical joint without the need for any solder. So crimping is a mechanical connection that can't melt when it gets hot and doesn't introduce any brittle points like soldering can. So the next question is, what does pitch mean? Pitch is actually an easy to understand concept. It's just the distance in between the pins of a connector. For 3D printer hardware, the most common pitch is 2.5 or 2.54 millimeters. However, there are some components that use a narrower pitch, such as the plugs on stepper motors. A NEMA 17 typically uses a narrower 2mm pitch, so your connector has to match if it's going to plug in. The pitch of any given connector may or may not be labelled on the box, but you can always rely on free online references that go through all of the connector specifications. With the basics out of the way, let's look at a tool needed for any of these connections. Regardless of the type of connector you're crimping, you're going to need to strip back the insulation from the end of the wire. So a good set of wire strippers are necessary, and these ones here are adjustable, and this happens automatically, dealing with various gauges of wire. The model I've been using for years is from Irwin, and they retail for around $20 on Amazon. They come with this adjustable guide, which can be slid in or out to keep your crimping distance repeatable, when doing multiple wires, you simply slide it up to touch the stopper. It can also be swiveled completely out of the way if you need to crimp a long length, such as removing exterior insulation. Other welcome features include wire cutters that'll make short work of even heavy gauge wire, and also an assortment of crimping tools in the center of the handle, which can be used for some of the connectors we're gonna explore later in this video. One question you might have is how much of the insulation do you need to strip? Well, it depends on the connector, and probably the safest thing you can do is line up the wire with the connector, identify how much needs to be exposed, and then shuffle the wire back and forth in the strippers until this amount is lining up with the tooth. If you've got it right, it should be spot on for your connector. Remembering that most terminals grip the wire in two places, and the section gripping the insulation shouldn't be stripped, so it's just the end portion of the wire that should be exposed. We now have a basis for going through specific connectors for specific purposes, starting with power cabling. As you can see, this SKR Pro board uses large screw terminals for the power inputs. These are the same terminals we'll find on the majority of power supplies. The connectors we need for these terminals are found in assorted packs, often referred to as heat shrink wire connectors or heat shrink terminals. In these sets, we have male and female bullet connectors, which can be used to make inline plugs. 
we also have these male and female spade connectors and they can be used in exactly the same way. We have fork connectors which we use in our power supply terminals. We have buck connectors which are great for extending thicker gauge wire without the need for solder. And we also have ring terminals. You'll notice there's always three different colours and that corresponds to how much current capacity they have and that's because the internal opening varies in diameter to suit various gauge wire. If you want, you can purchase a specific crimping tool for these type of connectors, but if you're not doing them a lot, you can also get away with the crimping tool built into the centre of the wire strippers. The process is simple. We match our connector to the gauge of the wire, strip back a few millimetres of insulation, the wires then go inside the connector, and they should just be poking out in the opening, Line up the pointiest part of the crimper with the little split in the metal housing. Apply pressure with the crimping tool and our connection is complete. Solder free and quite strong. This process is same for the different type of connectors. Just make sure you line up on the tool the part with the correct diameter to suit your particular terminals that you're using at the time. There are multiple applications for these fork terminals, but typically 3D printer main boards instead have these type of screw terminals where the wire goes inside. Option one is to simply expose some wire and hope it goes in cleanly. Sometimes it does, but other times it splays out and increases the chances of the wire shorting. Another option is to solder together the ends of the wires, a process known as tinning, but this is generally considered a safety hazard. Instead, what we want is a set of ferrules also known as bootlaces, and the matching crimping tool. Given the amount of parts that come in these kits, this proposition is buy once and have it there for whenever you need it in future. The crimping tool is also unique and quite cool, closing down from four sides at one time, kind of like an iris. Spray out different ferrules until we find one the right size. We can see this one is far too big, with too much space around the wire on the inside, whereas this smaller black version was a really nice fit with the wire snugly fitting in. To make the crimp, we slide the crimping tool over the top of the ferrule until it touches the plastic housing, squeeze the handles together. That will pinch the wire securely inside and give the exterior shape square edges. As you would hope, that makes for an ideal connector to go inside these screw terminals. And once they're clamped down, the connection is strong and secure with no chance of stray wires shorting. I hope you agree that using the appropriate connectors for high current wiring is a hell of a lot safer as well as being neater. Let's turn our attention to the type of connectors we usually find on main boards and in other hardware. I've tried a few different crimping tools for these connectors over the years and thanks to a recommendation from my patrons, I finally found one that does all of the connectors remaining in this video and that's the iOS 3220M. As you can see, it lists a bunch of connectors it's compatible with. The first connector we're going to look at is called a DuPont connector, and they're pretty cheap to buy in a big kit like this. These sets are very versatile, as they usually come with female terminals as well as male terminals, and an array of different configuration plastic housings that take both the male and female terminals. You've probably seen these before, for instance on a BL touch loom, or even in a pre-crimped variety set and these are very handy for prototyping circuits with a breadboard. The correct port to suit these DuPont connectors are these exposed header pins. They don't have any housing and their pitch is 2.54 millimeters. If you need to, you can actually use DuPont connectors on ports intended for JST connectors, but the pins on the board don't quite stick up far enough so the connection won't be that strong. They could also be plugged in backwards which could damage some components. Because you can crimp them to be either male or female, it allows you to make handy inline plugs. However, they are non-polarized, so it is possible to plug them in backwards, and again, that could damage some components. To crimp, we start with our usual method of removing the end of the insulation. You'll notice on the crimping tool that there's multiple openings, and they're to suit different thicknesses of wire. To find out the right one, close it most of the way up, and determine the one that has the snuggest fit. Here, it's a 1.6mm width. You'll notice the jaws of the crimping tool have a narrow and a wide side, and we'll notice that our terminal also has a narrow and wide section. To start, we insert our terminal, matching these up, and we squeeze down until it's held in place and centered. 
We now insert our stripped wire with the exposed side going towards the narrow end of the crimping tool. Apply pressure on the handles until it clicks and that should give us a good result. What we see here is a good crimp with the exposed wire held tightly and the insulation also held without being ruptured. You'll notice the housing has a wide as well as a narrow end. We're going to rotate it so the wide end is facing us and orient the wire so the crimp side is also facing up. Now all we need to do is slide it into position. There's a little raised section that will then lock on the tab and prevent it coming loose. The male connectors are crimped and work in exactly the same way. Like the connections to follow, we can remove the pin from inside the plastic housing by lifting the little tab and then pulling them straight out. This will allow us to rehouse them and change the configuration. DuPont connectors are handy to have around because they're versatile, but most of the time they won't give you the exact fit required for things like stepper motor plugs. The connector commonly seen on Chinese main boards has these little locking tabs that also prevents the plug from going in backwards, and it's a form of JST. As we know, there's quite a range of JST plugs, but the one we're after is JST XH with a pitch of 2.5 or 2.54 millimeters. One of these assorted packs is quite cheap and a two to five pin set will allow you to do fans, the misters, end stop plugs, as well as stepper motors. Here's the two halves of the connector and the female half is usually seen soldered onto our main board. So generally we're dealing with crimping the male half. We again strip the end of the wire and collect the terminals that we need before inserting them into the crimping tool, wide and narrow sides matching again, and inserting the wire towards the narrow side, squeezing down till it clicks, and ending up with a nice connection where the exposed wire, as well as the insulation, is held firmly. Before inserting into the housing, we need to inspect the terminal to see that there's a little raised tang on one side. We need to rotate the housing so this lines up with the opening in the plastic piece and when everything's correct, it prevents the terminal from pulling loose. This will give us a very neat and secure connection to our main board. Like the DuPont, we can remove the housing if we need to by getting something pointy to push down on the tang and then we can pull it out. Chinese boards usually use JST XH, but the other type we see on Duet hardware is a Molex connector, again with a 2.54 millimeter pitch and a chunky housing that can only be plugged in in the correct orientation. Duet supplies the connectors when you buy the board, but you can buy extra online if you need to, and they're crimped the same way we've seen so far. Strip the wire, insert the terminal into the crimping tool. It also has a wide and narrow end. We then insert the wire, squeeze down until it clicks, and we have our finished crimp. Gripping both the exposed wire as well as the insulation, although I pushed the wire a little too deep on this one. This is another connector that has a raised hang on the terminal, and again we need to line it up with the cutout in the plastic housing. Once we push it in far enough, it flips up and prevents the terminal from pulling out. Like with all the others, if we use something pointy to push down on the tang, we can remove the terminal from the plastic housing. And if you're going to reuse it, make sure the tang is pointing upwards enough. We mentioned earlier on that not all connectors have the same pitch. Here you can see that a JST XH is too big to plug into a stepper motor. That's because a NEMA 17 stepper motor has a 2mm pitch. And the connector we need for that is a JST PH. And we need a pack that goes all the way up to 6 or 7 if we're going to wire up stepper motors. These are just a smaller version of the JST XH with a male version that we crimp and a female version that's located in a stepper motor or sometimes on breakout boards like on this X change. Crimping works exactly the same way except it's smaller and a bit more fiddly. We strip the wire, insert the terminal into the crimping tool matching small to small and large to large, insert our wire in from one end, squeeze until it clicks and hopefully that will give us another good result with our terminal clamping both the exposed wire and insulation. The pattern continues when inserting into the plastic housing. Locate the raised tang, line it up with the opening in the housing, push it in until it clicks, and that will stop the terminal from coming out. To reverse it, we lift up on the tab with a small and pointy object, and then pull it straight out. We can go further and cover even more crimp connectors, such as the tiny JST plugs found on the side of a BL Touch. 
but everything covered in this video so far should cover 99% of what you'll find on a 3D printer. Years ago, I didn't have any of the proper tools, so I used to buy these JST RC car connectors and crush the terminals with pliers, which sometimes was okay, but usually was a disaster. Once you do have the proper tools and connectors, you'll never go back. So I would highly recommend building up the sets that you need over time. If there's something in this video you didn't know about, or perhaps something that I've missed, please let me know in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, happy wiring your 3D printer. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.